Sagittarius, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for early to mid-September 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know, I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business as always and start you off with an Oracle card here just so we could dip our toes in the energy and see what's happening for the lovely Saggy Collective. Hope you're all doing fabulous and fantastic, my friends. Let's get it going. My guides, talk to me. What do we got for the Sagittarius Collective here in early to mid-September? What energies, messages, insights can we look at? For our good friends and yeah we're just going to take a real quick look at this first card then we'll get into the full reading itself and at the very end i'll pull you a bonus card from the shadowland tarot just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean into which is always interesting but let's get it going here let's rock and see what we got but we're saggy in early to mid-september what's happening for my friends it's a beautiful time of year if i do say so myself I mean, we're getting towards the end of 2024. Same exact theme that I was picking up in all the fire signs. I feel like even the Leos got this card as well. Um, strong, strong spiritual protection and insulation for all the fire signs for one reason or another. And I, I do believe most people do have that spiritual protection as a default, but it feels heightened for some reason, which can be really good. There's this loving, affectionate vibe as well. So before we fully dive into that, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the September subscriber surprise towards the end, so you might want to check that out. And also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye, you know, I'd greatly appreciate it. But enough of the promo into the reading. Let's talk more about this card. So we see this lovely lady with the red headdress. I always like this card. And I like to mention that this white bird in divination and symbolism, they represent spirit, the love and light side. So we're talking angelic energies, source energy angel, spirit team, you name it. This is really beautiful spiritual protection, love, and care. So for some of you, this is love from the other side, from that more subtle realm that's showing up here. Now, a portion of you, whether you do feel like you need that protection over you or whether you don't, it's here anyway. So that's one thing I will say for you here. And it's sending love from the other side. I don't know why that message is coming through like that, but it is. Now, notice she is also snuggling up to that bird. So the themes around affection show up as well. So for some Saggies, maybe um, you're feeling extra affectionate towards somebody where you're wanting to show your affection. Maybe that's something you're needing. Maybe you need a big old hug. And I said it in the Leo reading, I'll give you guys one too. You get a big virtual bear hug from Kyle Cups. But to me, maybe it's someone you're connected to too. Maybe they need your bear hug. But we're just going to put that down right there. And yeah, let's get into tarot. And I always say this first card, it doesn't make or break the reading. It's just a little footnote. So let's get you three cards in the upright. Then we'll get into that intuitive juiciness. Shuffle it up one time here for the beautiful Saggies. Guides, talk to me. And while we get this shuffled up and ready to go, let's talk about last week's reading. It was titled An Explosive Talk. And just know that that energy could bleed over for a couple weeks. And to me, it felt like either it was a strong back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, or a talk that would spin a little out of hand. So that's something to watch out for. I mean, I know as a fire sign myself, we're very comfortable with fire energy. We could roll with the punches, but some people aren't as adept at it as we are. So let's see what energy shows up this week. As you know, energy is very fluid, never set in stone. So let me take this out. hits for you because we could be seeing your vibe or someone else's. Let's get it going. Three cards. Three cards to start for Saggy, please in early to mid-September. Thank you. World. Hmm. So we're starting with a possible ending here. Close of a chapter. It could also be karmic energy, which is something I've been seeing for you for weeks now. So we're going to have to talk about this. Let's get a couple more. So that, that theme is definitely still lingering. Okay, we have the Hierophant. Beautiful. Very, very powerful energy here. Saggy. Not quite saggy vibes, but this could be somebody else's energy that, that's around you. Let's give one more. One more. Thank you. The sun. All right, so we have all major arcana here, all very powerful energy, and all of them also linked to source energy as well. So that's something to keep in mind. There is strong, extremely powerful spiritual energy around every fire sign. Okay, so if you have multiple fire placements, it's like coming at you. But let's go through. 
I'll give you some of the classical meanings and archetypes, and we'll get into that juicy, intuitive stuff. But at first look, first glance, I would say we're leaning positive so far. Now, every card has positive and challenge, but we have major arcana after major arcana after major arcana. Now, in the tarot, the major arcana represent big, powerful themes, possible life changes that we're going through. And it's just an energy that's almost unstoppable when we get this much and, and this many. Um, and these energies can compete against each other. I don't necessarily feel like it's a too bad of a thing but all of them also have that strong source energy connected to it so we're gonna have to differentiate what these cards could be trying to tell us so let's go through piece by piece and really start to build it out position number one we are starting with the world and that's what these two cards share in common they're both two of the more complex energies within the whole tarot deck now the world itself is the last of the major arcana so it can represent endings closings of a chapter but to me, I don't think of this like an ending similar to the Ten of Swords. Like, it's not full-on painful. To me, it's like, okay, that chapter is complete. Let's open the next chapter. It's like from one chapter to another. So there's like a transitioning of some sort when we have the World card. Uh, for some of you, yeah, maybe it is just the chapter you're putting behind you. This is also a karmic energy. It's a cyclical energy. So we're going to need to watch out for that, whether it's a cycle that's going to swing back around or a cycle that you've already gone through. This is a major, major energy of metamorphosis and change. Okay. And yeah, the karmic archetypes here as well. It's like life journey, big picture thinking. So we'll want to look at it. Another thing I also say about the world, in my personal opinion, I connected to the world itself. So in this time, world events, what's happening in the world today, you might be extra sensitive to what's happening in the physical material world here, okay, around you. So we're going to have to look at this further for sure. It's it's a completion, possibly. Now, moving to the center, we have a much more grounded energy, whereas this one is all about cycles, things moving, things completing. The one in the center is like in place. Okay? Not very saggy like we have the Hierophant. So a portion of you might be connected to the Taurus here when this card is in the mix. And I'm just going to run down the list of the possibilities of the Hierophant. It could represent long-term commitments. It could represent people that have been in our life a very long time. This could represent power structures, governments, corporations, positions of authority, people in authority, people that call the shots. Okay? Um, so any of these things could be playing a major role in your life right now, especially if you're watching for career. I, <clears throat> pardon me, the higher thing could be playing a big part. Um, it's not moving, though, whereas this one is like metamorphosis and change and I'm hoping this isn't a blockage of some sort because the energy is moving, then it's like stopping. But the back end is very positive. So it might be for a reason. If any of you were going through delays or roadblocks in this time, it might be for the best. I don't know why I feel like I need to give that message already. Um, the Hierophant, aside from all the institutions I just named, is reliable. It could represent day-to-day -day life. Okay, so we're talking our daily routine, things that are within the box, traditional values. This isn't really thinking outside the box. So we're going to have to see now in the positive. Yeah, there could be a lot of positives with this. It is a marriage card as well. But when I see the Hierophant, it's energy that's not changing. Okay, it's not changing. It's not moving. It's stuck. Okay, so the negative of that card could be something that has stalled out. It could be stuck or it could be a problem. Okay, like a roadblock. Now to the back end, we have the Sun card. Probably the most positive card in the whole entire deck. I think a lot of readers will agree. Leo energy. So you might be connected to one. If that's not the case, I think of this as source energy, light, life and love that shine down on us from spirit. So you're seeing all these spiritual ties that we're picking up throughout the whole entire reading. This card could also represent things coming to light. So the expected, the unexpected becoming known, things coming to light, realizations, revelations, eureka moments. So for a lot of Sagis in this time, you could be connecting the dots or you could be figuring things out or having some sort of clarity in a situation, especially if this is representing a problem or a hurdle. So we're going to have to look into this further. I always feel like the sun is very positive, but the challenging aspect of it, it could show us things that we might not want to see either, but I'm not going to turn it into a challenge. I want to dive deeper on all of it. Let's jump in and clarify. Okay, let's get a good shuffle here for the sad beast, please. Guides and spirit team, what's happening? And yes, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot. Because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation. And I'm just giving you mine. What's going on in the world? 
And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why the box is here. If you're feeling any messages you want to give to Saji, drop it in the comments. I don't mind at all. Okay, world time. Why is the world here? Thank you. Okay. So we have the Knight of Swords in the upright. Yeah, this is that want for some very powerful change here, and it feels massive. Now, the thing that's concerning me, I don't even want to say concerning, is this in the middle. Because all this energy is here, like, yeah, let's go, let's do this, let's make it happen. It's very amped up and malleable. It's changeable. This energy, I feel like, could be saying, no, 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 not so fast, not quite yet. Uh, the Knight of Swords, again, is one of the fastest moving cards. You might be connected to an air sign, so Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. If that's not the case, this card can be very, very aggressive. Another thing I'm picking up here for a lot of you with this Knight of Swords and the world, this could be a cycle possibly repeating. So in this time, watch out for big returns of different types, whether it's individuals that are from the past or whether this is situations you've gone through. When I see this combination, it feels like the cycle spinning. This fast Knight of Swords is spinning that cycle. So watch out for various different big returns in this time. But if we're talking just about change and somebody wanting to get something moving, get something going, it's like, I'm all in. I'm all about the action. Let's do this. Let's make it happen. I feel like this higher thing could be slowing it down where it's like, not, not so fast. I'm already picking that up intuitively. It doesn't feel aggressive. Yes, for some of you, you might be closing certain chapters of your life in this time, putting things behind you. But with this energy spinning that wheel around, I feel like things could reemerge. Okay, there could be various things reemerging. Saw that with Aries as well. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. I think you get the point. I think you're picking up what I'm putting down. So let's see why the Hierophant's here. And I really want to get to the sun as well. So why is the Hierophant in the mix? It's the hard thing here. Thank you. And this energy, like I've been saying with the seven of wands, not so fast. Now, for a portion of you, why do I feel like somebody possibly rejecting something? Okay, and it doesn't even have to be like an active rejection. To me, it's just like, no, 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 not yet, not yet. It's like giving me that energy where it's slowing it down for one reason or another. And it doesn't feel permanent. But when I get this Hierophant Seven of Wands, it's like these energies are building a wall, whereas this energy up here feels like it's cycling, it's moving, it's quick. This one in the center is like, mm, nope, the wall is up, I'm guarded, and I'm not letting anything in. So these two energies are completely opposite. Now, the Seven of Wands can sometimes be combative as well. So that's what I'm saying. Is this a rejection of some sort? Is there a situation, an individual or something where you're like, no, not yet, or no, no, thank you. There is something like putting the wall up here in a very big way. That's just the main energy it's making me feel. Now, for a portion of you, if we're going to get away from that message, there could be something about your day-to-day -day routine that you might need to switch up, that you might need to change, whether that be career, whether that be things that you do, like everyday routine and chores and stuff like that. It's like you need a shake-up. Like it's giving me that vibe too. It's like, oh, it's like I got to switch it up in one way or another. So let's just keep moving forward. You might be getting like cabin fever or Listen, I'm a fire sign myself. I know certain certain things, if they feel too stagnant, that's when our energy will lash out a little bit. So maybe you need to switch things up. Let's keep moving. Again, we'll talk about it more during the recap, but it's very peculiar. It doesn't feel bad intentioned, but it's like, not yet. Let's see what's up with the, the sun. Then we'll do a quick little recap here. So why is the sun here? Thank you. Three wands. Cool. So it's coming. Like, even if there are delays, even if there is an energy that's saying not so fast, like, when I see the three of wands in the sun, it's like, okay, yeah, just having a little patience could really do you right. Okay? So, like, there is something that you probably shouldn't be rushing. There is something you should probably just let it take its natural course. That's the best way to go. Um, the three of wands is one of my cards of manifesting. It's creating. It's something that's almost there. And that's kind of what this has given me, like the it's so close yet so far or something's right there, but not quite yet. It's like one of the more frustrating type of energies to experience when like either a journey is almost complete or something is almost within your grasp. It's like so close. I don't know why this is coming through so strong for you this week. But the Three of Wands could also represent distance and travel for any of you. Any sort of travel or trip that you could be planning or taking, highly favored with the sun. This is victorious energy. Um, and I do still pick that up here, even though it's not quite yet. 
And I got something similar in the Leo reading too, where it's like, okay, well, there's a process you might have to go through. Might take a little while, but in the end, there is this big win. There's this massive win coming in. So I like it, but the way the energy flows is just a little frustrating to me, if I'm going to be honest. So don't be surprised that there's certain things frustrating you in this time. Let's go through and do a quick recap. Then we'll get into the shadow card. But if you kindly look in the box, position number one, we have the world card clarified by the Knight of Swords. So like I said, this energy spin and spin and spin, and it's getting something moving. It's like, all right, it's time to change this up. Another vibe I was picking up is that wheel spinning back and something returning, whether that be a person, whether that be a situation. It's like, all right, let's change the game. Moving to the center, not so fast. I said that multiple times with the Hierophant and the Seven of Wands. It's like, no, 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 not yet. Not ready for all that just yet. Uh, there could be certain things that you might be rejecting this time, whether it's uh, behaviors, thought patterns, people, situations, you name it. And there could also be something about your day-to-day -day life or routine that you, de you really need to switch it up soon. Getting to the back end, beautiful result in the end. Okay, uh, you might just need to be a little more patient and just let something process the way it needs to process because we have the sun and the three of wands. It's like so close yet so far, but this is a very good positive result in the end. And I, I like this for you. I actually love this for you. So I like the energy overall. It's just this energy in the middle. It feels a little uh, stubborn if I were to put it anyway. So please take a screenshot of that. There is a win in the end. Um, let's get into the shadow card now. And yeah, I always like to pull a shadow card at the very end just to see whether it's something within you or something you don't quite see. Shadow cards don't always have to be a challenge. They could be a good thing. So let's get you one. What is in the shadows here? And yes, if you made it to this point in the reading, please feel free to check out channel memberships. I'll put a link for it in the comments below. It's a beautiful way to support the channel and I have much love for all my channel members. Okay, let's get this shadow card out here. What do we got? Thank you. Okay, six of wands, victory. Okay, this is a really amazing card to have within the shadows. Now, there is a little bit of a cautionary energy with this as well. But to me, the Six of Wands is a card of victory, public notoriety, getting the kudos that you feel you deserve, and recognition for the hard work you've done. So the fact that this shows up in the shadows tells me a couple things. Either this is coming your way, and we do have this win at the end of this, whatever this is in the middle, we do have a win coming in which is great, even if you don't quite see how it's going to stack up or happen. But for some of you, maybe you feel a little underappreciated when this shows up in the shadows. Maybe you feel like either you're not getting what you deserve or you're not getting the recognition you feel you deserve, not in an egotistical manner. But when this shows up in the shadows, it's like, okay, well, where where's my parade type of energy? Very, pe very peculiar. Now, one thing I will say for a portion of you, since this energy does talk about somebody getting a lot of attention, I would say watch out for any individuals that you're connected to that might be too egocentric or people that might have too much of an ego because you might clash with them extra when this shows up as a shadow okay the six of wands not a bad card but i feel like for a lot of you it's that victory that's still yet to come so yeah saggy that's what i have for you this week my beautiful friends don't click away just yet though i'm gonna give you the details the September subscriber surprise. If you would like to book a personal reading with me, you can check out my digital calendar at my website, mastermetaphysics.com. But for the September subscriber surprise, I'm giving away two copies of one of my favorite decks of all time, the beautiful Wizard's Tarot. It's gorgeous and it works great. So if you'd like to get your name in for this, it's two simple things. As always, my friends, first, you must be subscribed. And second, let me know down in the comments where would you like to go for your dream vacation? What are you manifesting? Let me know. Let's bring it to fruition. You'll be entered to win. And at the end of the month, the winners will be announced in the community tab. As always, my friends, much love. And I'll see you again.